What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. I am here at the lodge here. Friday night, you can see behind me, you have the live stream set up and it's freaking packed here. Every single table is full for either a tournament, cash game, meetup game, whatever the hell it is. There's a lot of people here, it's insane. And this is gonna be a, a pretty fun video, hopefully. It's the calm before the storm right now, playing one of the bigger games I've ever played in so far. It's a 2550 uncapped game. When it's 2550 in Texas, there's probably going to be the 100, $200 straddle on for the majority of the night. So it's gonna be a big one. I'm thinking of buying anywhere between 30,000, 20,000 to start. We'll see how that, how long that buy is gonna last. But yeah, pretty nervous for the game. It's gonna be a big one, should be a fun one. And I'm ready, hopefully. I can find another win in these live stream streets because it hasn't treated me well so far But anyways, hopefully you enjoy this video. Leave a like. It's gonna be one of the bigger games I've ever played Like I said, and um, we'll play some big pots. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck. Alrighty, everyone We hop into the stream and buy in for $20,000 to start and let's strap in our seatbelts because this is not a small game at all Let's go to the first hand with King 10 of hearts in the low jack, and there's a $100 straddle on for pretty much the entire night. The player to my right opens up the action to $300, and with King 10, I think I can go either way with a call or a raise, and early on in this session, I elect the more aggressive option. I 3-bet to $900, and action folds the button who elects to call... But something strange about this call, he actually didn't see that I 3-bet myself, and he actually wanted to 3-bet himself. So, interesting development knowing that he has a hand that wanted to raise from the button, so I might have to tread cautiously moving forward. Anyways, action folds back to Jimmy, who makes the call himself, so just the three of us to a flop. We're off to a flop of Jack-8-3, two diamonds and a heart, and Jimmy checks to me, and given the pre-flop dynamics, and also considering that I just completely whiffed the flop, I decided to check this one and see how strong this button player is, and this button decides to check back, so I don't think that this player is necessarily too strong. Let's go to a turn, which comes the six of hearts. This is fun. Improved to the backdoor flush draw along with one overcard. Jimmy checks it, I decide to check it as played, and now this button player bets out a small one to 750 bucks. Pretty small considering the size of the pot, and when Jimmy calls for 750, I am certainly priced in to make the call, given a very good price to hopefully hit a heart and get paid. But, like I said, with the button checking on the flop, I can't imagine him having something too strong. At best, I'm thinking just a jack, and I think I can get a jack to fold on the river here if I blast off. So sensing weakness from Jimmy as well, just making the call here. I think I can bluff off some rivers like I said, and also could also hit a heart as well and get paid. So let's go for it right now. I check raise to $3,500, and I am praying that... We can hopefully get this through, but this button player thinks about it for a long time, and he folds! Oh my god! Now seeing on the live stream that he folded pocket queens, uh, I feel like I got away with murder. Jimmy with his sevens is going to get out of there as well, and yeah, pretty fortunate to not get stacked this first hand of the session, and I'm feeling great, because... Got the bluff through with King High in the moment, and now after the fact that I can see the hands on stream, I feel like I really got away with murder this one. This next hand, I have to explain what happens before I do what I do. We're playing the 7 deuce game. I would make $100 from every single person on the table, plus an additional another $100 from the last person to fold as an extra needle. So it would be great to see 7 deuce, raise it, and take it down and take home an extra $1,000 and add it to my stack. And... I do that exactly here. I'm first to act under the gun, and 7 deuce is going to be in the range here. I put in a raise to $300 with the $100 straddle on board, and action folds to the player in the straddle seat. He makes the call, and we're off to a flop heads up of queen, queen, 10. He checks it over to me, and I'm just going to play it like any other normal hand I would raise with. On this board, I want a size small. I bet out 225 bucks. He folds pretty easily, and just like that, Show the seven deuce, the seven high, and I make an extra about thousand to nine hundred dollars in my stack with very little resistance. So far, all things are smooth here in the 5100 stream. 
With things going well, I look down at king queen offsuit and plus two and raise it up to 300. Once again, folds around to the $100 straddler and he calls for 200 more. We're off to a flop of queen nine seven to hearts. He checks it over to me and this is of course a very good flop for me, but I think sometimes I can check back with a strong hand and I do that in this instance. I check back and the turn comes the 10 of diamonds. Jimmy now throws out a bet of $400 and as played, I'm not going anywhere. I've also picked up a straight draw myself with any jack making a straight. So let's see a river which comes a six. Pretty rough river to see as any eight makes a straight now and Jimmy decides to check it over to me. It's decision time for me and can I ever bet for value here in this spot? It seems likely that one pair wouldn't be able to get much value as I only just get called by a hand like Queen Jack specifically. So I just check this one back and I see the bad news and lose to 8-5. So nice hand, Jimmy. Just lucky that he didn't bet the river and didn't have to face a decision to call or fold. Losing with King Queen, but time to redeem myself. I pick up King Queen of Clubs once again on the button. There's a low jack open to $250, the cutoff three bets to $850, and now on to me. I have a very playable hand on the button, and I don't want to just make the call here. Cold calling three bets doesn't seem like the best idea, so I decided to put in a raise, four bet it up to 2100. Action folds around to the cutoff player, who doesn't take too long before ripping his stack. It's a five bet jam of around 10,000, and I snap fold. This one didn't work out, and after a decent start to the session here, King Queens decided to screw me over, and this is a really easy way to lose 2,000 bucks, honestly. All right, unfortunately, this is the hand of the night, and sadly, due to some technical difficulties on stream, this was so close to being on stream for everyone to see, but uh, this is the hand against Brad, and to add some respect on the magnitude of this hand, I set up a lovely example for you guys to follow along as to what happened. I invested, we got a, we got a felt, not, not a poker felt, a little blackjack felt, got some chips to recreate everything in the scene, and our lovely napkins. So let's start off the action. I'm in the hijack here, and I look down at one king. That's a spade, followed by another king. Oh, no. No, this is a clover. Okay, this is the clover. This is the spade. So two kings in the hijack with uh, the $100 straddle on, and I decide to put in a raise to 300 On to Brad here, our fellow jiggities. I should have had, like, a Brad picture. That would be really cool. Anyways, he thinks that uh, 300 is not enough, and three bets to 900 well, it folds back to me. I'm out of position, and obviously, I mean, look at these bad, but let's recheck, all right? Two black kings, yeah. Gonna put in more money here. This is the, the money in the middle. I'm gonna size up and four bet him to 2,500. 2,500 to go back onto Brad, and he decides to make the call. So we've got a pretty big pot brewing. First time playing a big pot against Brad here. We got over 5,000 in the middle. We are off to a flop. Let's go. Flop comes. This is a jack of diamonds. Ten of spades. Why are they all upside down? And the six of diamonds here. So not the best flop for kings in a four bet pot, considering he has all of the jiggities and tens in the world. Um, as you know, he Gerard always has jiggities. Anyways, I'm out of position and first to act here, and I decide to start off with a bet of one yellow chip, one red, or that's a, that's a purple, and three blacks. Color of the rainbow, put it in the middle for $1,800. And Brad here decides $1,800. Let's go for it. He makes the call for that amount. Let's just give him some change here. He puts in two of these yellow ones. We give him two back and, all right, filming and dealing, whatever. Pretty big pot in the middle, and we're playing with napkins. We're off to a turn, which comes the six of clubs board pairing. Still two diamonds on board here, and onto me. Looking at his stack, he has like 13,000, a little bit more than that in his stack, and I size up to a bet of 6,700. 6,700 to go, and Brad is not going anywhere. He quickly makes the call. Lovely. So he only leaves himself with about 7,000 behind left of the sack. As you can see, something around this is accurate. So 7,000 to go. Let's see a big river. Deuce of hearts, complete brick on the board here. And I decide whether I want to check or bet against him. 
honestly, as played, I bet so big on the turn, I'm happy to just uh, do a little checky poos. And he does not take the bait and ends up checking back. I show the kings and he tables his ace king of diamonds here and we scoop this one. So over $22,000 in the pot, ship it. Doesn't look like $22,000 well, these big denominations, but pretty big pot. Unfortunate that we weren't able to capture it on stream due to some technical difficulties. Hopefully you enjoy the napkins and at least I got a felt. Maybe one of these days I'll use a deck of cards. So unfortunately the stream was over fairly quickly due to some technical difficulties, but we whip out the vlog camera and pick up ace queen of diamonds and lojack. Once again, there's always the $100 straddle on board. The play to my right raises it up to $250 and seeing this premium of a hand, I put in yet another raise. I three bet to 750 bucks folds around the player to my right, and he makes the call. We're off to a flop of 3-3-6, two clubs, and he checks it over to me. Certainly could start with a bet here with ace-queen high, but in position, could definitely just start with a check as well, and hopefully bank on the turn. I check my option, and the turn comes the seven of clubs, and now this player bets out $1,000. Decision point between calling or folding here, and certainly leaning towards a fold a high percentage of the time, mainly because I don't even have a club in hand to make a flush and improve to a stronger holding. Could be drawing dead, but I'm a non-believer for the time being. I make the call for 1,000. We're going to a river, which comes a board pairing seven, so... Double paired board, I'm sitting with ace high, and this player decides to check it over. Here, I guess ace high could be enough showdown value to see what happens. I check this one back, but see the bad news. This player shows pocket eights. Nice hand, man, and maybe just a little too stubborn calling the thousand bucks on the turn. In the next situation, I pick up ace eight of clubs in plus two and start off with the action by raising to 300. Folds around and get the under the unstraddler to defend his straddle. So we're off to a flop of 977 rainbow. Not a single club on board and this player checks to me here. I've been doing a lot of checking in this session and this one is like no other. I check this one back with ace high and some backdoor straight draw possibilities. When the turn comes, the five of diamonds, one of those opportunities does come luckily. This player bets out $400 and here... I have ace high, which is good showdown once again. Also, having an eight gives me some equity to hit a gutter. I decide to make the call with a gut shot straight draw and over card. I'm not going anywhere. We're off to a river, which comes the queen of spades. And on this card, we whiff everything once again, but our opponent bets out pretty large this time to $1,300. Hmm. Something about how this hand played out just feels a little fishy. It's hard to imagine that this player is going to have a super strong hand besides a random queen x holding or 7x. And the bad part about me bluff catching here and calling down with ace high is that I actually contain an 8. And I think a lot of his bluffs are going to hold an 8 in hand as it blocks some combinations of 8-7 and 8-6. Also, 10-8 would have been open-ended on the flop as well. But I guess I could also beat random cards like Jack 10 or hands that hold two diamonds and didn't connect with the queen. Anyways, I'm a non-believer as you know, folding is boring, $1,300, let's do it. I toss in a chip for a call and this player shows 10-8. Luckily, got the right read and win with ace high in this one. Maybe I'm just a little too stubborn and sticky and he made a really good bluff, but regardless, it's nice to get chips pushed my way and have the hero call of ace high work out in my favor. This next hand gets pretty big and interesting, so strap in. I pick up ace deuce of hearts in the hijack. There is a low jack open to $250. Here with the suited ace in position, I make the call, and the button on my left also calls as well. We're going to a flop three ways, which comes jack, seven, deuce, two hearts. Pair and the nut flush draw get a lot going for us. The low jack, C bets, $500. Obviously not going anywhere and actually contemplated on making the raise. I will say raising here in this game seems a little scary considering how much I have to raise and, you know, pretty much just drawing for hearts. So in position of this bet, I think I can go either way, but I decided on just make the call and the button folds. So going heads up to a turn, which is the four of diamonds. For a second time, he fires out again and amps up the aggression to 1400. Look, 
not folding. Maybe I'd fold worse flush draws here, but definitely not the nut flush draw and a pair. Can always hit a deuce or ace to suck out and win as well as outs. So for 1400 bucks, I stick it in the middle, also playing with plenty behind. So if we hit a heart, we could definitely get paid in a big way. Let's go to a river, which is the 10 of clubs. Nope. And even worse, this player blasts away $3,800 in the middle. Can I ever bluff catch with bottom pair? I don't think so. Can't do much with just one pair and the worst one at that. So I just sheepishly let my cards go and we see an extra needle. This player shows seven deuce for flopped two pair. Oh my God, I owe him an extra $200 now on top of him winning a pretty big pot against us. He takes down a $1,000 bounty and somehow finds value to value bet seven deuce. What a sick flop for him. One of the very last interesting hands of the night before we wrap up the session, I pick up eight, nine of hearts and plus one and raise it up to 300. Brad to my left makes the call for 300 and get the big blind and under the gun to call as well. So we're going to a flop four ways of king eight three rainbow with one heart. Action checks to me, I've got middle pair with some backdoor heart draw possibilities on an extremely dry board. I decided to check this one over to Brad and he bets out 600. Now the other players fold to me and here with pair of eights here, certainly could fold, but with backdoor hearts and I guess I can talk myself into a two pair draw, that's definitely very valid. I decide on making a call and seeing the turn. Heads up against Brad here out of position. The turn is the seven of spades. This was not one of the cards I wanted to see. I check it over to him. He bets out $1,300 and I'm just gonna have to let this one go here and fold my pair of eights. And he's nice enough to show ace king offsuit. So flatted my early position open with ace king, gets there and gets paid a little bit. But nice hand, Brad. You got a little bit of a rebate from our big hand earlier. Back home in the Airbnb last night here in Austin, and uh, the game was good. Unfortunately, the stream was down due to some technical difficulties. But uh, when the stream was done, played a little bit more. The game got pretty tough, I'll be honest. So had to just get out of there. Anyways, final numbers. It was nice to play with Brad, play a really big one. But end of the day, played for about four hours in the game for 30,000 out for 34, 33,480. The number, there's too many numbers, too many digits. I don't know. Something around there. I won like 3,400 bucks, which is nice. And uh, ending off the trip with a win is solid. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Comment down below where you want me to be next time. Be traveling a lot all over the country and happy to get out of here. And uh, see you guys next time. Peace.